coming straight up from downtown costume extraordinaire here to make you look good on stage. Please welcome Melissa Ong. Woo! Hey. 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 Hello. Welcome, Melissa Welcome. Um, for Thank coming you. on to our Thanks show. For me. Absolutely. Thanks. A very high tech production. <laughs> hey, don't make fun of the production. That's great. I'm loving it. That was an ironic. So, you are working on Dr. Ride's American Beach House at Ars Nova. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What should we expect from, from the play, from the costumes? Uh, you know, it's, it's a really beautiful play about four queer individuals. Mm. Um, Written by a queer playwright. Um, Shout out Liza. Yeah, Liza Birkenmeyer, um, and directed by Katie Brook. Um, and it's it's very special to be part of the process because I think Li you know Liza has been working on it for quite some time, and Katie and her together actually have been developing it together for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, and you know when I first read it, I kind of. It's, it's interesting because it's so fresh and different, but it also had this sort of quality to it that reminded me of like a Tennessee Williams or William Inge play. Mm. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but just in the sort of structure of it and the, I don't know, there's a lot of, you know, this examination of repression of desire and um, how you can be stifled by the place that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it takes place in 1983. So, you know, thinking about what it was like to be queer then and, um, you know, what it's like to not have language for that. Mm. So, Ooh, yeah. Do you, uh, how did you approach that from like a costume standpoint? Gosh, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting too because it's, it's sort of been, I think Liza has set up this really interesting sort of intergenerational queer, I don't know, uh, like community or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between the four women that are in it. Mm -hmm. um, and also sort of seeing how each character interacts with their own queerness and how mm -hmm. that is displayed or not displayed. And so for me, it was really a lot about um, finding the subtext there and the sort of hit like either like clues that are deliberately hidden or peppered in or things that are a little more explicit um, and uh, you know I think a word that Liza and Katie used when we were discussing this process was dissonance which mm -hmm. I thought was um, really beautiful and it just sort of figuring out like what the markers are right. the, the little markers and telling, you know, tell signs. And, right, right, right. Um, so, yeah. When you pick up a script, are there certain things that jump out at you, that excite you? Yeah, I mean, I love, I love a lot of plays, but I love, I love when stage directions are very visual, mm. but in a very open and evocative way. Um, you know, so like, let's say, I, stage direction is something like, this room looks like the ocean, or, <laughs> you know, as opposed to being, I... I see, like very pedantic. Very, very, mm. yeah, very pedantic. Um, or I really love impossible stage directions, too. Mm. Um, like, you know. So is it more... into ocean. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. It, so like stage directions as more driven by emotion than like literal sort of yeah. physical things? Or even just how, how can you, you know, I think, well, I mean, I, I think a lot about Eric and the Saint plays, because um, I teach too, and I actually, I teach those plays, like in, in the sort of design of like, how do you approach, because he writes these sort of very, I mean, <laughs> there are these short little plays, but there's so much packed into them, and he'll write something like, um, you know, this character is like flying like a moth mm. by the light, you know? <laughs> and you're like, how do you figure out how right. to represent that right, right, right. Um, on stage? And, uh, you know, I mean, I think something he talks about too is like big cheap theater. Mm -hmm. And so how do you do it in a way mm. that is magical, but also, you know, not, mm. not literal? Right, mm -hmm. right. You were born in Hong Kong, but you were raised in Singapore, mm -hmm. and you went to school here in the States. Uh, can you tell us a little about like that journey of yours? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's been, you know, I my family's still in Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, I was born in Hong Kong because my parents lived there for like the first five years of my life. But mm -hmm. you know, they're Singaporean, they're still in Singapore. Um, and I've been in the States, I want to say about 13 years, maybe with like a two year gap in there. Mm -hmm. um, and Same, actually. Yeah. Yeah, 13 years. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, shit. Cheers. I mean, 2006. <laughs> yeah, 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 2006. Yeah. Um, you know, that's when I left to go to college. Mm -hmm. And the whole time, I knew I wanted to get out. Um, Singapore is a very small, um, at times, conservative mm -hmm. place. And it's, you know, it's still, I mean, it's different because it really shaped me into who I am. Mm -hmm. But there's still very much some censorship that goes on in the arts. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, at the time when I was experiencing theater, um, you know, there were certain plays that were banned um, right. by local writers. Or, you know, the government could come at any point and just be like, nope, you're not going on tonight, even if it was opening night. Like, they could tell you an hour before, and, it, mm, right. and, and that would be it. And so I feel like the stakes wow. there are very different. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like, as, you know, as this sort of young, angsty 18-year-old, <laughs> I was like, theater, theater is where I'm sort of finding myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also I was like, I need to get out of here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, so yeah, I, I left and I went to I went to college in the states, and I've sort of never looked back. Mm. Yeah. So was was yeah. like so the U.S. was? Did you feel very liberated be doing art here, or? Um, gosh, yeah. I mean, I think as an eighteen-year-old, I wasn't really thinking about whether I would <laughs> feel liberated, <laughs> but I did feel liberated in the sense that I felt like. You know, no one really knows me here, so I could be mm. like another person, right, or I right, could, right. or I yeah. could be the person that I've been dreaming of being. You know, oh, there's okay. just that sense of, right. yeah. Sense so you of came distance. straight to New York, New York City. No, I went to Chicago. Oh, Chicago! I went, first, right. I went to school at University of Chicago. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that's a great theater town too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot, yeah. lot of roots in yeah. Chicago. Logan Vaughn would argue that it's better than New York City, but yeah. Logan, that's yeah. that's cute, oh, Logan. Uh, yeah, director, director, big, big, yeah. big theaters. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We had her on the show, and we had a we had a debate. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> New York City, great, but great. <laughs> I, don't know, I didn't know she was a Chicago person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She lives Very here now, so. though, right? Yeah, she she is based here now. I think. Cool. She, yeah, she did a lot. I don't know if she, I know she spent a lot of time in the Chicago mm -hmm. theater scene. I can't remember if she's Great. Like and she's there. about Great. to be, what is it, the artistic, assistant artistic director of Ojai? Oh. Something like that? Yeah. Great. So, good for up. her. Good yeah, yeah, it. she's killing it. Yeah. yeah. If I may, you know, yes. when I was in Singapore, I was trying to find theater, but the, the, when I went to Singapore to find theater, the ones that I saw uh, advertised were usually just like really big, splashy mm. Broadway shows. Um, and you know, being being someone that doesn't live there, who just has family there, uh, I I wasn't able to see like where the kind of like downtown-ish stuff was. So, what is the theater scene in Singapore? Yeah, I mean, I think there is definitely a mix of you know, there's the sort of splashy. They like to do. There are some theaters that really like to do, I guess, what do you call them, pantomimes? Mm -hmm. It's like a big thing for them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no hate, no hate. No hate. <laughs> yeah, no hate. No I don't know, yeah, saying. no, I mean, you, you, ha you have to bring in the audiences somehow. Yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, and they like balance it out, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like, w which a lot of regional theaters here do too. It's like sort of do the things that they know are going to bring people in and then mm -hmm. sort of slip in the stuff that's maybe going to, you know, um, challenge their audiences a bit more. But um, over there, yeah, there's that. And then there's also, they're like really small performance spaces. Mm -hmm. But the thing about, I feel, and maybe might be similar to New York, is that in Singapore, like rental is extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, um, a lot of theater companies, like their shows will typically run like, I don't know, less than a month. Mm -hmm. Because they can't, you know, uh, they can't really afford to rent right. the theater yeah. for that long. Right, right, right. Um, so that's that might account for why it's like, because yeah, it comes in like that. spurts, and mm -hmm. there isn't really like a season the same mm -hmm. way that there mm -hmm. is here. So it's I like see. you kind of just got to know when something's going on. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Like touch and go. Every yeah, day. yeah, yeah. Do you feel like your multinational background or history sort of influences your costume design? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, it's, it's interesting because I feel like, you know, coming from Singapore, I have this strange experience of like, being the majority there oh. and coming here it took me a couple years here like more than a couple years right. where I was like oh I'm not the majority right, right, you right. know your brain sort of adjusts yeah. and it's and it's like it's a very interesting experience but also you know there are certain things like I've worked on a fair amount of Asian American plays which I love I love working with Asian actors and directors yeah. and makers um, but, you know, there's like, so I feel like even when you're working on, let's say like, you know, I'm ethnically Chinese, when I'm working on, an, on a Chinese play, it's like there's certain things that like, yeah, I know, like kind of know that because your grandmother has told you that mm -hmm. or something. But then there's also the part that's like, no, I, I'm like, that's not entirely my experience. Right, right, right. So right. I don't know if that answers your question, mm -hmm. sort of. Sort of, well, okay. Sort of. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you design all over the country, uh, pretty regularly it seems. Yeah. What are the differences between working regional shows versus New York City shows and do you have a preference? Well, when I do shows in New York, I get to sleep in my own bed. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> so I really like that. Uh -huh. um, but I mean, and, you know, I, I the difference, I'm trying to think of the difference. Um, I mean, I think the difference is that sort of like regionally with, with each institution you go to, you're really sort of interacting with that institution mm -hmm. and like the cultural mm -hmm. shift at each one. Right. So you're kind of like adapting to each. Um, and also like just learning like the delightful quirks of, you know, and, and there are a lot of institutions that are really welcoming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you find they're more welcoming regionally than they are in New York City? Because I feel like some New York City institutions are sort of cold. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just like a New York uh, thing. There's definitely like, like a little snobbery in New York that, I, that I've experienced. Yeah. Like regional I, don't know, so I just feel like, yeah. I mean, the fact that it's like, yeah. you know, New York and then everything else is regional. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like already sort of, that's why that's I'm always true. like, right. I wonder what the actual experience is right. like working. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because there definitely is a snobbery about New York City. Oh yeah. 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 I mean. I wonder I, if it translates to the culture. You know? I don't know that I've like experienced that because when you're working at both theaters, like, I mean, not both theaters, but like right. the different. You know, if you're working in New York or you're working regionally, I'm like. I, whatever theater it is, they want to make sure that their show is well produced mm -hmm. and is really, you know, and that people like it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know that I've experienced coldness. I feel like I've experienced like a, the same level of like, we're going to help you get this done, <laughs> and like, right, right. you know, um, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And um, like, I've definitely felt a lot of warmth that like smaller companies like Club Thumb. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, true, yeah. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they produce really good shows. Yeah, yeah, and they've shout they've told yeah, yeah, shout yeah, out Club Thumb, and they've totally got this like we're all in it together. We're here. They're very present mm -hmm. um, when they're producing shows. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think regionally, in terms of the experience, it's like yeah, you're sort of plopped here and you're doing the show, mm -hmm. and sometimes I mean, the thing is, I think sometimes you get to chill out like a little bit more. Mm. Because, you know, if you're in New York, you're gonna be like, okay, what's the next thing I'm running to? What's the mm -hmm. next thing I'm doing? But when you, mm. let's let's say you're like in Milwaukee or like Houston, mm -hmm. you know, the designers are like, well, okay, well, it's after tech and we're all gonna go back to our hotel and right, why right. don't we just get a train? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. Um, so there's that difference, I suppose. But in terms of like attitudes, mm -hmm. I think it's that different. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. So having designed extensively across the country, what are your three favorite shows that you have designed for? Oh, gosh, you know, I was <laughs> thinking about this. Mm -hmm. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. Choose your favorite yeah. baby. Yep. <laughs> it's tough. Yep. It's tough because I really, when I say yes to a show, like, it's something that I do really like, oh, okay. mm -hmm. love. You know, yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if, if yeah, I mean it's yeah. I, I, I So do. you love all of them, is that what you're saying? 
That's a cop Maybe. out. Okay. That's a cop out. <laughs> there, I feel like I haven't worked on a show that I dislike. Okay, so uh, let me let me rephrase that question then. What is the most personal show? Um, well, I think definitely I I can definitely think of. Um, there's this production of Picnic that I did. Gosh, probably two years ago now. Mm. Um, right, two years. Must be. Um, with Will Davis, who I mm. collaborate with quite a bit, cool. um, who's lovely and very talented. Um, and he had been dreaming up this production, um, you know, his his sort of dream picnic for quite a long time. I think this is something he had been working on all through grad school. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got to do a production that really was a queer picnic. Um, he really wanted to, you know, he'd read a lot about William Inge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how Inge was very closeted during his life and eventually committed suicide mm -hmm. and, and just sort of all the demons that were chasing him during mm -hmm. his life. Um, and Will really saw Picnic as this sort of like manifestation of all of that, mm -hmm. this sort of like, yeah, suppressed desire mm -hmm. and um, denial mm -hmm. um, and fantasy actually mm -hmm. that he created because he couldn't really have it in his life. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, uh, we, we did a picnic that was um, entirely queer cast. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just like a really beautiful, sort of, I think, really healing production. Mm. Yeah, it was self-representation. That's, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's, That's wonderful that you sick. chose that. Yeah. Other art or artists that inspire your work? Oh, inspire my work. Yeah. Um, no, this is all off the door. <laughs> It's all in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, I draw inspiration <laughs> from so many places. Yeah. Um, you know, I really love films. Mm. Um, I really, you know, I'm now I'm just thinking about my process and like what I look at, mm -hmm. films, mm -hmm. sometimes fashion, but like, you know, that's, that's sometimes good or not. Um, I also love watching other artists' processes. Mm -hmm. That's very fascinating to me. Um, but in terms of films, I guess like well, the earliest things that influenced me, I love Wong Kar Wai's work. Oh man, yeah. oh. In the Mood is just yeah. incredible. It's one of my top, yeah. Like, yeah. top five best films, man. It's yeah. so beautiful. And yeah. the soundtrack is, ah. Yeah. Yeah. I have yet to find a key pal that like, sensuous. <laughs> just the slow Crushed motion me. photography in that is like, apps just stunning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. release of the soup yeah. dumplings. Yeah, it's so yeah. romantic. Uh, now mm. we're totally <laughs> Yeah, it's like so romantic, but there's like there's a they don't they don't even kiss at all. Yeah. They barely even touch. Yeah. It's so incredible. Yeah, so incredible. And yeah, it's it so incredible. Like, I feel like I need yeah. a cigarette. Yeah. I know. I've seen, that, I've seen that movie at least Oof. three times. It's yeah. so oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's stunning. So yeah. Good. yeah, the way that he uses mirrors in it too. Mm -hmm. The smoke. The smoke. Yeah, that, that scene that scene in the restaurant. The literal smoke and oh mirrors. God. Where they're like cutting the steak uh, and it's like, get the get out of here. It's so good. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I used to be a film person. <laughs> I could I, tell. I, I could just, tell. We just geeked out. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. apologies. Yeah. 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 We yeah. Asian. Well, respect. Great. Can you tell me what you mean about, um, or uh, go in a little bit more into depth of what you're talking about? Uh, about processes, like you like watching mm -hmm. other people's processes. Yeah, because I feel like sometimes when you're designing or or any sort of art process, mm -hmm. it can feel so isolating and lonely mm -hmm. and like you're just in your own head or you're trapped in a room and you're trying yeah. to figure it out. Yeah. Um, and it actually is really like, for me, you know, I feel like I'm still learning about how I work. But when I watch other artists talk about their work, it really inspires me because mm -hmm. I feel like, oh yeah, we're all kind of doing this, mm -hmm. you know, in a similar way. Um, I mean, there's so many, but just the two that like I can remember. Um, I am Pei, I watched his documentary recently, um, Learning from the Light, um, mm -hmm. where he's commissioned to build a muse I think a museum for Islamic art. In Qatar, mm -hmm. and he yeah, yes, and, yes, I've seen this. Yeah, yes. and he takes you through it, and 
And you know, he, I think in this documentary he's like 91. Mm -hmm. And at some point, okay. I don't know, I think there's like some hiccup in the process and he kind of like sighs and he looks in the camera and he's just like, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. And yeah. I was like, you're 91, right. you're considered like the master <laughs> right. of your field, yeah. Yeah. you know, architecture, and you're, and you're still like acknowledging that you're still mm -hmm. learning. Um, and then Frank Gehry, I don't know why I'm listing architects, but Frank Gehry is like another person that I've mm -hmm. watched his documentary and you kind of see like how he mm -hmm. tears things up and sticks them, them together, together in a yeah. very non-precious way, which I think can also be really helpful because sometimes you tend to like, Right. You know, yeah, no, put a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah, I think it can feel less lonely. <laughs> you realize that these greats are so figuring it out. Design is lonely. Like, it's, yeah. a lonely, it's a lonely job sometimes. So. Uh, yeah. If there was any advice that you could give to younger theater makers, what advice would you like to give? Oh, I think, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot, clearly, because I just talked about it. But I think mm -hmm. something that I would say to my younger self is you never stop learning. Mm. You really don't. I mean, I feel like when you're young, and when I was young, I did this, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be 30 and I'm going to know everything that I have to know. <laughs> right. And then as you get older, and you know, I'm past 30 now, you, you realize that you're still learning. And actually for me, that's the most exciting part mm -hmm. is that I actually feel like with every project I've done, I've learned something new. Mm. Like there's always at least one thing I've learned and I actually really enjoy that about oh, my work. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise you get bored. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right, so actually we're coming up to the end of our interview. Uh, we always ask our guests uh, something, you know, if they can recommend something to mm. our audience. Definitely go and see Dr. Rise American Beach House. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, Shout it out. Yep, yeah, it's at the Greenwich House. Ars Nova is producing it. Written by Eliza Birkenmeyer, directed by Katie Brooke. Mm. Uh, and the cast is Susan Blommert, Marga Gomez, Kristen C., and Aaron Markey. And Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so you much for much. coming on. This Thank has been you. great. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Thanks cheers, for having cheers. me. Absolutely. Cheers, Thank cheers. You.